Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi, I'm MENJ and I'm back again for the second video of my channel Alright, as I was saying previously This channel will be about comparative religion mostly So today, I would like to talk about this book The Bible So, um, I noticed that a lot of uh, Muslims They don't really have a great general idea of what the Bible is so let's talk about the chapters in the bible okay first of all we need to understand that the bible consists of two major parts the first part is the old testament okay uh, this old testament is actually uh, consists of books because you see the so-called chapters in the bible are actually uh, individual books written by those who are unknown okay even though traditionally they are attributed to the prophets of the past so in the old testament we have uh, the five books of moses okay the pentateuch or the, the the torah right so these five books are genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and then we have the the second um, set of uh, writings okay uh, generally known as the historical, you know, the history of of the uh, of the Jewish prophets of the past. So most of this history are actually written in chronicles and kings, right? And then we also have the uh, major and minor prophets. Okay, some of these prophets are uh, that are in the uh, Old Testament are like Daniel, Hosea, Isaiah, Jonah, Habakkuk, and so on, right? And then we also have what the uh, what what uh, Muslims know as the Zabur, or what Christians call the Psalms, but interestingly enough, in the Old Testament, the what we what Muslims recognize as Zabur or Psalms is split into three. So we have Psalms, we have Proverbs, and we have Song of Songs. These three are attributed to David, the Prophet David, or as Muslims, uh, we know him as Dawood. Alright? So, uh, this is just the Old Testament. So, we also have the New Testament. So, the New Testament uh, are actually Christ specifically Christian writings. Okay? The Jews do not acknowledge uh, these writings to be uh, revelations from God. Or they don't, basic basically, they don't, you know, believe in these writings. But the Christians do. Alright? So, um, in the New Testament, uh, we have uh, the four books of the Gospels. Interestingly enough, okay, uh, the Christians uh, during the early days of the Christianity in the first century and the second century, there were thousands of Gospels, all right. But in the third century, there was a major um, uh, dystonomy, okay, between there was a major crisis in uh, you know in the in the church, and they when they convene in the. Uh, uh, after uh, you know, in a council of Nicaea regarding the uh, nature of Jesus, they actually came to a conclusion that you know God and Jesus are one, and then eventually they you know hash everything together. They decided that they need you know um, a couple of books, all right, to uh, affirm this theology, and hence we have these uh, four gospels that are chosen out of those thousands of gospels. Uh, in the first and second century, only four were chosen. So these four are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are known as the Synoptics, because meaning uh, the one, because they they derive from the same source. Okay, the writers, the authors of Mark, Matthew, and Luke uh, actually share information among each other. How or why they do that, we do not know. All right. And then we have John. John is actually separate from these three synoptics, all right? So, and John is more towards the mystical aspect of, you know, of uh, Gnosticism, okay? So that is why when you read John, there's a lot of uh, Greek philosophy in it, all right? So, there's, those are just the Gospels. And then we have the writings of Paul, okay? Paul is an allegedly a prophet. He calls himself a prophet. Or apostle of Jesus, so we have his writings. Okay, Corinthians, the letters actually, Corinthians, Galatians, Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, blah blah blah. Right, and then we have also the writings of of the 
attributed to James. Okay, James was a so-called uh, apostle of Jesus. Okay, a follower of Jesus, and then we have the writings of Peter, uh, also allegedly you know attributed to Jesus, and we have uh, John. Okay, John, not the uh, jo not John the the Baptist by the way, but John the so-called apostle. You know, some people say that John, this John is actually a follower of Paul, but if that is open to dispute, alright? So, these are basically the uh, contents of the Bible, alright? I think those who are into comparative religion will probably know this already. I'm just, you know, talking about this as an introduction to, to what I will be, you know, speaking about in the future, right? So, um, right, okay. So, what do Muslims believe about the Bible? Alright? Now, this is a very interesting question. Okay? Because when you read, you know, Christians' uh, websites, when you read the polemics that are written by the apologists, the Christian side of the, you know, the Christian side of things, they, uh, they actually try to, you know, to, to give an impression that Muslims are supposed to believe in the Bible. Alright? That Muslims have to believe in the Bible. Just because the Quran... Let's, let's go back, let's reverse a bit and we talk about the Quran. The Quran tells us Muslims that there were books that were revealed before the Quran came. Okay? These, four, these books are the Torah, the Taurat in Arabic, Taurat, the Zabur, Zabur is Psalms if we translate it, and the Injil, alright? Singular, Injil, Gospel, not Gospels. Now that's, that's the interesting uh, point which which we will talk about shortly. So um, when Christians, uh, you know, especially the missionaries, they read this, uh, you know, this injunction for Muslims to believe in the Torah, the Torah, the Zabur, and the and the and the uh, Injil, uh, they immediately they try to associate that with the Bible. This this uh, corrupted book. Okay, may I say that right? This book is corrupted. All right, so. Uh, we basically the Muslims do not believe in the Bible that we that are presented by the Jews and the Christians today. We do not at all believe that the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil are pure and are outer, and outdated, as is the Quran. All right, we believe that the Quran supersedes these previous scriptures. All right, we believe that the Quran. Is a criterion, a muhaimin over past scriptures. Meaning that even though let's assume for one second or two seconds that the Torah, the Torah, the Zabur and the Injil are really preserved, alright, are really truly preserved with no changes or whatsoever, they are still obsolete because the Quran supersedes it. Okay? Meaning, even though let's assume that this Bible is 100% true and there's no... Uh, alteration or whatsoever alright we still believe in the Quran first and foremost we will not take this uh, this uh, so called uh, Bible as our holy book so if no matter how many times the Christians try to you know uh, twist this it is still not going to change the mind of the Muslims right okay so as I was saying uh, you know in the in the point earlier that we assume that the Bible is pure and unadulterated. The answer is no. The Bible is not pure and unadulterated. There are many, many contradictions within it. There are many, many ridiculous stories within it. Okay, take for example the story of Lot. Okay, Lot is uh, is whom we call Nabi Luf, the Lot, Lot. Okay, Luf. Uh, he was sent to his people uh, to prevent them from you know from doing in homosexual activities. But in the end, the, pe the people disobeyed him and God sent punishment upon them. And the Quran stressed many, many times that Lord Lut was a very honorable man, he was an honest man, and he was always uh, escorting his people to seek God and to repent from their sins. But in this Bible, in this corrupted Bible, we have a story whereby the daughters of Lot actually seduce their father to sleep with them and because of that sexual act okay that that uh, that incest may i say that that incest stirs uh, activity both of them got pregnant 
Okay, now that is a very horrible, horrible thing to say about a prophet God, right? For me, I find that story a very, very disgusting thing to attribute to, to something so called holy. You know, a person who is considered holy in Christianity, uh, in even in Judaism and Christianity, a prophet of God would do something like that. Now that's just unimaginable, alright. Now that's just one example. There are many, many other examples, alright. Now let's look into another example, alright. Uh, there's a disgusting story in the Bible uh, where you can actually refer to in Ezekiel 23. Okay, I will not read out the passage to you because it's. Uh, you know, I mean, if I'm going to read it out, then this video, I think, will be considered to be XXX rated. Alright? Okay. So, you can just take a Bible, okay? And you just refer to Ezekiel 23. Alright. So, yeah. And then there's also many other passages, like, yeah, I think in Song of Solomon's. Uh, yeah, Song of Songs, okay? There's a very disgusting story there also. I mean, it's about breasts and everything. Yeah, I mean the 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 description is about a woman's body. It's so graphic that I find it impossible for this to be reviewed or even you know to be inspired by God. Okay, this is something very human. Okay, you know I mean to be you know to be uh, attracted to a woman and to describe her beauty in you know in erotic terms is something a human would do. But it's not something that God would do, alright. So, when you compare these texts, you know these stories, and of course there are many, many other contradictions. But I'm giving us giving these two or three examples for this video, okay? So it's just too horrible for it. I mean, it's just too disgusting. It's too sexually explicit for such a book to be reviewed or to be inspired by God. Now you compare that with the Quran, you see how beautiful the Quran is. Even if you do not know a word of Arabic, if you compare the in any in any English translation to the contents of the Bible, you find that they are miles apart. Really, it's truly miles apart, and that's just the translation. We haven't gone into the Arabic yet. Okay, so I think that's pretty much my take on the Bible. All right. So to summarize what I've said, okay, the Bible consists of uh, two parts. Okay, the Old Testament and New Testament. And Muslims do believe in the Torah, the Gospel, and the, in the Zabur, okay? Or we go and, we go and say, to say in Arabic, is the Taurat, the Zabur, and the Injil, alright? Previous scriptures. But we don't believe that the Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil are part of this Bible, okay? There may be contents from these original books which are in this Bible, but it is not that content. But pure unadulterated content that is a very key point okay so when muslims uh, read the verse where we affirm that the zabu the taurat and the injil are from god yes we do affirm where we will never ever refer that to the, as the bible okay the bible is not the torah the zabu and the injil the zabu and the torah and the injil are not the bible okay so i think that's all we have today so thank you for listening to me if you like my video you do give a thumbs up if you don't like my video you dislike it if you think that i'm giving useful information please subscribe okay the button is down there below i hope to see you again in the next video inshallah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh